HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton High School on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon for Hopkinton Hillers softball. Today, the three and one Hillers take on the one and two Milford Scarlet Hawks. The Hillers, of course, out of the TVL Milford, out of the Hockamock. It is a gorgeous day this afternoon. Temperatures in the 60s, the sun is out, and we are ready for softball. And it should be a great battle here today between two very well-coached teams. Let's take a look at the Milford Scarlet Hawks lineup. Leading things off is the second baseman, Olivia Morelli. Lucy Creedon, the center fielder, is batting second. Megan Hart, the third baseman, hitting third. Carly Ferreira, the first baseman, hitting cleanup. Amanda Wenkos, the shortstop, hitting fifth. April Swain, the pitcher, hitting sixth. Elise Fauerbach, the catcher, hitting seventh. Natalie Casilli, the left fielder, hitting eighth. And Taylor Wardrop, the right fielder, hitting ninth for the Scarlet Hawks. And with the Hopkinton Hillers defense, I send it to my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklap. Good morning, Tom. Playing third base is Tori Fisher, Alyssa McIntyre at shortstop. Emily Whalen playing second base. Catherine Morse at first. We'll wait for the first pitch by Juliana Cedia. That's a strike. Left to right, Jordan Chevrolet, Katie Hawley, Mia Morningstar brought up for this game. Juliana Cedia pitching today. Catching for Cedia is Carly Stevens. We are live on our YouTube page for this game as that is Going to be a foul ball. Count is 0 and 2 on Olivia Morelli. It looked like there could have been a play on that that just fell between the players. They each looked at each other. Perhaps a little miscommunication. Perhaps. Cedia is set to deal. That's fouled away. The count remains 0 and 2. Juliana pitched great yesterday in relief of Charlotte Kahn. She did take the loss, however, in a excellent 5-4 battle with Lincoln Sudbury. 10 inning battle. Oh yeah, we got overtime pay for that, Tom. That's right. One and two is the count on Morelli. It was almost a two and a half hour long game yesterday. But certainly a fun game to watch. Swing and a miss, out number one. That'll bring up Lucy Frieden, the center fielder. Nice to see Steve DeVita from post, 40, post 59 Milford in the third base coach's box. Goes from softball to baseball. That pitch just a little bit high. He's done a great job with both programs. Milford will be hosting the American Legion State championship games this year. Hopefully uh, we'll be there with Ashland. Yeah, in a 100 degree press box. <laughs> Two and oh count on Creedon. Swing and a miss. Two one pitch. And just inside. Juliana Cedia has gotten a good amount of work in the pitcher's circle this season. Along with Charlotte Can. That pitch is a little bit high. Lucy Creedon draws the walk. One out, one on. Megan Hart, the third baseman, will step in 
to the right-handed batter's box. Juliana Cedia, 373 ERA, two wins, one loss, four appearances on the mound. She's pitched 20 and two-thirds of an inning. She's given up 12 runs, 11 of which were earned, and struck out 16 hitters. That pitch just inside. Plenty of press here today. Certainly is. You got the Metro West Daily News in town as well for this big crosstown matchup. One and one count on Creedon, or excuse me, Megan Hart. CD is set to deliver. And this is a fair ball, slow roller up the middle, picked up by Cedia, throw to first, off the mark, and advancing to third is going to be Creedon, and she'll be held up by Coach DeVito. So now it's going to be runners on the corners with one out. Carly Ferreira, the first baseman, will step in. Well, there, there comes the ground rules in the play. There's a slight opening down the right field line, and that's where the ball went. We would have been sitting there if it was yesterday. And excuse me, the lead runner actually came in to score, so Creedon did uh, end up coming around to make it a one nothing game. So Milford strikes first. CD just didn't get herself positioned to throw. Runner on second with one out, as that pitch is just inside. CD is set to deliver. That's on the ground. It's going to get by the catcher, and the runner will advance to third. A wild pitch. Since we're broadcasting live, we've got some parents sitting at their desks at work, whether in Boston or in a surrounding area watching the game. CD is set to deliver. And that is just slow. Nice stop by the catcher, Carly Stevens. She did a great job substituting for Jillian Cedia yesterday, who I understand is in Beijing or someplace far east of here. 3-0 count. Swing and a miss. Three and one. CD is set to deal. Swing and a miss, full count. That was a tough pitch to lay off. It looks like as big as a watermelon coming in. Those letter high fastballs. CD delivers, and there's strike three, got her looking. Two away, and that's the second strikeout for CD. That'll bring up Amanda Wenkes, the shortstop. Down low, another good stop by the catcher, Carly Stevens. Linda Wenkes, a junior. The freshman set to deliver. This is hit high in the air, over to right field, and it's caught. A nice catch by Mia Morningstar getting the start today. Almost overran that ball. Third out, yep, yeah, but she's able to make the play and wrap up the top of the first. But the Scarlet Hawks do play to run. It's 1-0 as we head to the bottom of the first on HCAM. Bottom of the first, Milford leading Hopkinton, one to nothing. Let's take a look at the Hopkinton Hillers batting order leading things off is going to be the second baseman, Emily Whalen. Mia Morningstar, the right fielder, hitting second. Katie Holly, the center fielder, hitting third. Jordan Chevery, the left fielder, hitting cleanup. Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop, hitting fifth. Juliana Cedia, the pitcher, hitting sixth. Caitlin Destacio, the designated player, hitting seventh. Catherine Morse, the first baseman, hitting eighth. And Carly Stevens, the catcher, hitting ninth. And 
just a moment. We'll have Larry Sacklad give you the Milford Scarlet Hawks defense as Emily Whalen is set to step in. They're playing in for Emily Whalen, who slaps one to the shortstop, picked up, thrown out. Carly Hart is playing third base. Amanda Wink is at short. Olivia Morelli at second base. Carly Fiorera at first base. Natalie Casilli in left. Lucy Creedon in center. Taylor Waldrop in right. Elise Fowerback, what a great catcher's name. And April Swain on the mound. Near morning Morningstar takes strike one. One out. For the Hillers, no runners on. And Morningstar hits this one in the air, foul. 0 oh and two. Every generation, the names change, name popularity. We have nice names, Caitlin, April. And this is up the left side and through the shortstop. And aboard with one out is Mia Morningstar, went right through the legs of the Scarlet Hawks shortstop, Amanda Wenkis. And that'll bring up Katie Holly, the center fielder. I wonder how my first girlfriend, Gladys, is doing. <laughs> and her sister, Myrtle. <laughs> and this is hit up the left side, picked up by the shortstop. Throw to first, it's an overthrow. And everybody's going to be safe. And now advancing to third is Mia Morningstar. So Katie Holly reaches on the error, and that'll bring up Jordan Chevary, the left fielder. Runners on the corners, one out for the Hillers. Swain set to deliver, and that's going to get through the catcher, and advancing to second is Katie Holly on the pass ball. Jordan Chevary hitting a 737 on the season. And she will hit this one foul. 0 oh and 2. Overall at the plate, she is 14 for 19. What a great start to the season for Jordan. That'd be 748, wouldn't it? 737. 737. It's actually the team leading batting average as of right now as well. And there is a strike for out number two. That'll bring up Alyssa McIntyre. So two outs, two on for the Hillers. Alyssa McIntyre at a 450 mark on the season, nine for 20 at the plate. We'll pitch inside. Runners on second and third for the Hillers. Swain deals. And this is hit in the air and caught by Swain for the third and final out of the first inning. It's a 1-0 Milford lead as we head to the top of the second on H camp. Top of the second inning, CD is set to deliver a 1-0 lead for Milford. And there is a strike to the pitcher, April Swain. The least foul back on deck. Six, seven, and eight due up for the Scarlet Hawks. Oh, and two is the count now. April Swain, Lee's Fauerbach, and Natalie Casilli. Swing and a miss, out number one. Third strikeout of the game for Juliana Cedia. Just a little bit high, Tom. Catcher takes one low, one and oh. Cedia set to deliver. Upstairs. 
Two and oh. That one just inside, three and oh. Yellfield playing at medium depth for a foul back. There's a strike, three and one. Cedia deals, and there's strike two. She battles back, full count now. You ever notice the home plate umpire doesn't have much discretion with their strike call? It's always the raising of the hand and the fist. It's not like they can do the cha-cha-cha. Well, there's certain umpires out there that are very animated. One's followed into the backstop, count remains full. Cedia deals, just high. Arbach draws the one out walk. They'll bring up Natalie Casilli, the left fielder. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to be with you on this gorgeous Wednesday afternoon for Hiller's softball. School vacation, so we have the 11 a.m. start today. That pitch inside. And a look by Carly Stevens at the runner over at first. She threw down yesterday with a lefty in the batter's box and she almost threw it in the right field, so she's got to be careful. That one just low. John Ritz is our cameraman today. Juliana Cedia deals. There's a strike. Two and one. Casilli is the Emily Whalen version running up in the batter's box. And there's a bunt, and that is foul. Two and two. The ball went about six inches. I thought it was seven. All right. <laughs> it's certainly a great afternoon to have this early start. Not a cloud in the sky today. Swing and a miss. There's out number two. That is the fourth strikeout of the game for Juliana Cedia. And that'll bring up Taylor Waldrop, the right fielder. What do you think happened to clouds from yesterday, Tom? I don't know. You'll have to ask a meteorologist. Cedia deals. There's a strike. Cedia should take care of the nine hitter. Get back in the dugout. That is fouled away up the right side. Oh and two. Plenty of English on that one, right at the end of the bat. Ah, I see some people I know in the stands. I'll have to give them a shout out. The O2. Just low. We may have some international viewership, Tom. I'll fill you in when I know for sure. Do you know we were uh, popular all over the world? Of course. All right. Could be watching from China. Taylor softball has a I, I know, but you get three girls over in China. Swing and a miss. That is the third strikeout of the inning for Cedia, fifth of the game. And we will head to the bottom of the second. Milford leading Hopkinton one to nothing on H cam. Bottom of the second inning, a one nothing Scarlet Hawks lead. Juliana Cedia set to start things off for the Hillers. Due up it is six, seven, and eight. Juliana Cedia, Caitlin Destacio, and Catherine Morse. And the first pitch from April Swain is a strike. Swain deals, and this is up the middle. That's going to get through into center field, and it's a leadoff single for the pitcher, Juliana Cedia. Not a big fan of turf fields. See how fast that ball scooted out there? 
If you're not positioned right, that ball's going to the wall. Juliana Cedia hitting a 273 on the season heading into this game. 3 4 11 overall at the plate. A little pinch runner for Juliana Cedia. And we're going to get Sienna Harrigan out there to pinch run. She was yesterday's right fielder. Usually it's Heather Sebo that pinch runs. Kaylin Destacio, the designated player, will step in. That's fouled away, 0 oh and 1. Runner on first for the Hillers, no outs here in the bottom of the second. One nothing Milford lead. Swain set to deliver. Just low. Driving through downtown Hopkinton, you'd think they had a a worldwide event just a couple of days ago. Just a regular day in Hopkinton. That one just upstairs. Two and one. That one's fought off foul, two and two. Looks like April Swain turns her wrist over when she throws, rather than bringing it straight up. And this is a slow roller up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, and they'll get one, advancing to second, is Sienna Harrigan, the pinch runner for Juliana Cedia. One away, four to three on the out. Catherine Morse will come up to the plate. I don't think we've seen Catherine Morse see it this year, have we? She is one for five overall at the plate, so has not had a whole lot of opportunities in the batter's box. And according to the stats, that was the first at bat for Caitlin Destacio as well. And that hit her, and she will get the free pass over to first base. So runners on first and second now with one out. Carly Stevens, the catcher, will step in. The sophomore is 3 for 15 at the plate. 200 batting average, one run scored, one driven in. There's a strike. Hope Catherine Morse is all right over there. The 0 1, swing and a miss. 0 and 2 now. Due up next is Emily Whalen. Just going to make contact here. There's strike three. Got her looking. We'll bring up Emily Whalen, who grounded out last inning. What's happening here? The shortstop and the first baseman giving high fives for a strikeout? I don't think I've ever seen that before. The second baseman now playing way in. They got the scouting report on Emily Whalen. And that's bunted foul, 0 oh and 1. Two out, I think she ought to hit away. She's got good back control. It's only going to move a runner up one base. I think she was trying to catch him off guard there. Well, she could have. She'll swing here and hit this one up the right side, past the reach of the first baseman. And the runners will be held up, so that'll load up the bases with two outs. Sienna Harrigan pushed up to third. Catherine Morse at second. Emily Whalen aboard with a single. And now Mia Morningstar, the right fielder, steps in. She singled last inning. Mia Morningstar batting 1,000 this season, one for one overall at the plate. Were you a math major? Of course. <laughs> the 1-0. Just missed, a little high. 2-0 count now on the freshman.
Swain delivers. There's a strike. We don't get a real good view of inside, outside. We do get a high and low. That one is just outside. Three Except and on a one. pitch like that. That was way outside. Well, with a 3-1 count, base is loaded. You're ho are you holding your swing here, Larry? I am. And she'll take strike two. Full count. Runners will be off on the ball release. That's how softball is played. The junior pitcher for the Scarlet Hawks, April Swain, delivers, and that's fouled away. The walk here would tie the game. Base hit should score two. Line up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air up the right side, past the reach of the first baseman. Pretty good effort by Carly Ferreira. Count remains full. Do up next is Katie Holly. You'd like to get to her. She's going to be a Lady Jasper next year. I bet you didn't know that, Tom. I did not. And this is ripped up the middle right to the second baseman. And that was just a uh, bad placement for the Hillers there. That was a great piece of hitting by Morningstar. But right Olivia Borelli just in the right place at the right time. And that is the third and final out of the bottom of the second to the top of the third we go. Milford leading Hopkinton one to nothing on HCAM. Top of the third inning, the Scarlet Hawks coming up. And we want to remind you, HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Do up for the Scarlet Hawks is the top of the order. Olivia Morelli, the second baseman, Lucy Creed in the center fielder, and Megan Hart, the third baseman. How often does it happen? Somebody makes a great play in the field and leads off the next inning. I've heard that little thing all my life. Here she is, Olivia Morelli. Pitch just high, one and oh. Yeah, she certainly made a great play over at second base to keep the Hillers scoreless in the bottom of the second. That's fouled off, one and one. The one one. Hit in the air to the left side and handled by the shortstop, Alyssa McIntyre, one away. That'll bring up Lucy Creed in the center fielder. Cedia deals. There's a strike. The girls' game moved so much quicker than the boys' game. Cedia took three warm-up pitches. They didn't throw the ball around. One and one. Well, the Hillers certainly have a bright future pitching-wise with Charlotte Cannon and Juliana Cedia both in their freshman seasons. Fouled away, one and two. The Hillers led by first season head coach, Shannon Alberry. She's coached within the program for a number of years, including the JV team, last few seasons. A pitch just outside, two and two. The field dimensions here are 200 down the left field line, 200 down the right field line, and 185 to left center. There's a foul ball out of play. Of an odd configuration. I'll be glad when they get on the regular field. They're actually scheduled to play on the grass field next Monday against Norton. Swing and a miss, another strikeout for Juliana Cedia. 
two away. That'll bring up Megan Hart, the third baseman. That's six strikeouts now for Cedia. The freshman deals. There's a strike. See a lot of parents here. Maybe they've played hooky from work. <laughs> Very possible. We'll instruct our cameraman not to pan over. <laughs> it's too nice out to go to work. You don't need a pink slip on a nice day like today. The 0 2. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Juliana Cedia. And she is just firing these Scarlet Hawks hitters down. We will head to the bottom of the third. Milford leading Hopkinton one to nothing on H cam. Bottom of the third inning. The Hillers coming up. Due up is three, four, and five. Katie Holly, Jordan Chevery, and Alyssa McIntyre. Let's see what the captain can do. She's heading to Manhattan College. She'll be a Lady Jasper. I bet you don't know what a Jasper is, Tom. I do not. The type of quartz. I'm sure all the fans are just really interested in that little factoid. <laughs> I was going to guess some kind of flying insect. Well, you wouldn't have been far off. The flying insects land on the quartz. Katie Holly has been sensational at the plate so far this season. 14 for 20. 700 batting average. 12 runs scored, 13 driven in. She had a chance to walk it off yesterday with the winning runs on base against Lincoln Sudbury, but grounded out to first baseman or the first base woman. And this is up the left side and gloved by the shortstop, but she will not have a play. And Katie Holly is aboard with the single, and that'll bring up Jordan Chevery. Nice athletic play by Wenkes. Certainly was. Usually your shortstops are your better athletes, both in baseball and in softball. Jordan Chevery with a team leading 737 batting average hanging in this game as the runner takes off for second and she's safe. A stolen base for Katie Holly. That was a close play over at second base, but Katie Holly with some good speed. Good throw by the catcher for Milford, Lee's Feuerbach. Got to be careful on the turf. Your foot doesn't pop off, off the bag. And this is hit in the air and foul, but just out of the reach of Carly Ferreira, who made a good effort. Well, it was oh. an okay effort. I don't know. It was a good effort. <laughs> oh, and two. You're full of superlatives today. Alyssa McIntyre on deck. That's fouled into the backstop. I just think I bring the positivity, Larry, and you bring the negativity. That's exactly right. It's a good combination. Where's the hot dog lady? She's gonna come by. Up the middle, and it's gloved by the second baseman, throw to first, and they'll get the out at first, but advancing to third is Katie Holly. A job well done there by Chevery. I bet you didn't know Alyssa McIntyre's brother, former right fielder for the Hopkins and Hillers, is over in uh, France, in Paris. Ah. Photo was sent to me of the uh, tragic fire in the Notre Dame Cathedral. We got her mom, Cheryl, here, Grandma Ruthie, her father, Mal. Pitch just outside to McIntyre, one and O. Oh. Game tying run over at third base with one out for the Hillers. And this is ripped into left field. That'll get down for a hit. Here comes Katie Holly to tie things up and it's an RBI single for Alyssa McIntyre. Do you hear that off in the distance? A little round of applause from her brother over in Paris. <laughs> That'll bring up Juliana Cedia. Her mom was in the stands today. She's got to be happy with the way she's throwing. Certainly should. And this is ripped over to left field. And that'll get down for a hit. And now rounding second is McIntyre heading to third. 
and she will stop there. It is a double for Juliana Cedia. Juliana just powered that ball into left field. A great piece of hitting there, and that'll bring up Caitlin Destacio. Going to be a pinch runner. We'll bring Sienna Harrigan back out to pinch run. That's the benefit of knowing how to play your home field. Left field that was playing a little bit shallow. Wind up in the pitch, and that got away from the catcher, but she's able to gather it up before any runners could advance. 0 oh and 1. Swain set to deal. Swing and a miss. 0 oh and 2. She's not particularly overpowering, and the Hopkins and hitters can really stroke it. They put up 25 on Holliston. The 1-1, and this is a slow roller up the middle, past the reach of Swain, and the shortstop is going to throw it over to third, and it gets away from the third baseman. Everybody's going to be safe. A run comes around to score My God, for the there Hillers. There was a collision over there. And there was a collision at third base. We certainly hope, Megan Hart, the third baseman's okay. An RBI single for Distasio. Nothing dirty about that slide. Just two people meeting at the base. Oh my goodness. Harrigan's up to third. Catherine Morse will step into the batter's box. A little shortstop. Didn't see the runner heading from second to third initially. And got the throw off a little too late. And now the runner from first going to take off. And catcher Feuerbach will just allow Destacio to steal the bag. Second and third for the Hillers. Hopkinton now leading Milford two to one. Third baseman creeping in a little bit. And this is up the left side, gloved by the third baseman. She'll throw it over to first, it's off the mark. And now the run from third will come around to score as Harrigan will make it a three to one game. Catherine Morris reaches on the error and the Hillers have a two run lead. That ball was going to be off target as soon as it left her hand. I'll bring up Carly Stevens. Well, she just went back to third with no hesitation. She might have had the play there. This is going to get by the catcher, and advancing to second is Morse. A wild pitch there. 1 0 count on Stevens as the Hillers have something brewing here in the bottom of the third. Well, now they're going to have a little town meeting out there. Coach DeVito going to talk to his infielders as well as his pitcher. The Hillers bats starting to come alive. To recap the inning, it all started off with a Katie Holly single. Jordan Chevery then grounded out, but Holly advanced. And then Alyssa McIntyre with an RBI single to drive in Holly. And then you had Juliana Cedia with a long double to left field. Sienna Harrigan came in a pinch run, then Caitlin Destacio was able to drive in Harrigan, who was pinch running for CDF for the third run. Coach or, excuse DeVita me. doesn't want to let this game get out of control. Yeah, she drove in actually McIntyre for the second run, and then Catherine Morse reached on an error to drive in CDF. And that's right back to the pitcher, throw to third, and she's safe. Good heads up base running there by Destacio. Two away. Just beat it back to the bag. On that collision play at third base, the, the fielder has to give some base to the runner. They can't just stand in front. So I'm not saying she deserved to get hit, but there's a ground ball. The second picked up, throw to first, retires the side. Four to three on the out. The Hillers, though, play three runs, and they have a three to one lead as we head to the top of the fourth on H cam. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Phil's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Top of the fourth inning, the Hillers leading the Scarlet Hawks of Milford 3-1. Due up for Milford is the... Four, five, and six hitters. Carly Ferreira, Bando Wenkos, and Aunt April Swain. Cedia delivers. And that is inside. One and O. Oh.
Guilford one and two on the season. The Hillers three and one. A pitch just high, two and oh. Take you through the TVL softball standings when we get a moment. Fouled away. Hopkins should be right up there near the top. Well, since we're live, a little uh, breaking sports news. The Patriots know they're a week one opponent. Swing and a miss. It'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ooh. Minus Antonio Brown. That's right. We'll see how they fare. And Le'Veon Bell. Two and two. Patriots added Demarius Thomas yesterday. I think it's a pretty good pickup. There's not a lot at risk there. Tom Brady needed some toys. See what they do in the draft. Full count pitch coming to Ferreira. And that's foul. I talked to Tom yesterday. Everything's going good. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Wife, kids. He did sit on the couch and watch the marathon. I yeah, you do at, know that. You are at the Super Bowl ring party, right? Yes. That's just low, and Ferreira has drawn the walk. They'll bring up Amanda Wentgos, the shortstop. Tom Happy, Larry Sacklett, happy to be with you for Hopkinton Hillers softball on this gorgeous Wednesday afternoon. The Hillers leading Milford here in the top of the fourth, three to one. Swing and a miss. Foul tip. Oh, and one on Wentgos, who flew out her only at bat in this game. And this is ripped into center field, but caught by Katie Holly. And that is going to be out number one. Carly Ferreira is going to be thrown out as well. What a throw from Holly to get it over to Morse at first base. And they caught Ferreira off guard for that's, the double play. That's heads up. What a missile. Unbelievable throw by Katie Holly. And that'll bring up April Swain, the pitcher. Wow. She could play for Milford 59 this summer. <laughs> Up high. One and oh. Wow. Well, post 77 could use some outfielders. That's true, too. <laughs> There's a strike. You should see a throw out from the right fielder on somebody taken off from first, but from center field. Well, Ferreira just did not see it coming. Just caught off guard there. Swing and a miss. Because as you said, it's very rare to see a center fielder with that kind of arm. One, two pitch from Juliana Cedia. Just high, two and two. Cedia so far in this game has given up one run on two hits and has struck out several hitters. And there's a strike for another strikeout on April Swain for her eighth K of the day. And we will head to the bottom of the fourth. The Hillers leading Milford three to one on H cam. Bottom of the fourth inning. The Hillers coming up to the plate, due up two, three, and four. Mia Morningstar, the right fielder. Katie Holly, the center fielder. And Jordan Chevery, the left fielder. Hillers leading the Scarlet Hawks 3 to 1 as we enter this bottom of the fourth. All three runs by the Hillers were scored last inning. Mia Morningstar so far 1 for 2 today. And there's a strike. Being the ever intrepid reporter that you are, maybe you ought to find out what they talk about in the circle. Just before the inning begins. I wanted to know. This is up the middle, back to the pitcher, throw to first, and there's one away. Score that one three. Well, it's a deep dark secret of what they talk about uh, there. I don't know. Katie Hawley will step in, the center fielder. 
She's having a nice day at the plate. She reached on an error and singled, as well as scored a run and stole a base. And came up with that defensive gem. You just saw it, it rocket up the middle. And another good piece of hitting by Katie Holly. It'll be a one-out single. It'll bring up Jordan Chevery, the left fielder. Is Jordan a sophomore this year? She is a junior. Junior. And that's inside and a little wild. That'll allow Katie Holly to advance. She got quite a bit of playing time last year in a familiar left field position. If she keeps hitting the way she's been hitting, she'll get a whole lot of playing time this year. Team leading 737 heading into today's game. 0 for 2 so far in this one, however. But she'll hit this one up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, they get the out. Katie Holly advances to third, runner on third, two away. That'll bring up Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop. She mailed it, I think, the last time up, a little weak pop up. That pitch inside. Alyssa McIntyre in her junior season, 450 batting average. She's hit very nicely so far for the Hillers. One and one. He was a starting shortstop all last year. Seven runs driven in, or two runs driven in, seven runs scored. Swain delivers, and this is hit in the air. Past the reach of the shortstop. Here comes Katie Holly. It's a 4-1 game, and RBI single for Alyssa McIntyre. That's her second ribby of the day, isn't it? It certainly is. She had the hit last inning that drove in Katie Holly. So it's also her second time driving in Katie Holly. Juliana Cedia steps in. There's a strike. Well, the left fielder's still playing a little shallow for Juliana Cedia based on her last plate appearance. Fouled away. Overflow crowd here at uh, the turf field. Certainly is. Good crowd on hand today. The 0-2. And that is just inside. One and two. Infield is playing really deep for Juliana Cedia. That one is low. Two's across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Another low pitch there, and now the runner from first. Catcher Alyssa can't McIntyre find it. is going to take off for a second. And Farbach able to find it before McIntyre could think about third. Toughest play for a catcher is when the ball's right at your feet. Full count pitch. And this is ripped into center. Failed past the reach of the center fielder. I think it went off her glove. Here comes Alyssa McIntyre. It's a five to one game. Another ribby for Juliana Cedia. Couple. I think she'll get pinch run for. Most likely. And she will be credited with the RBI single. She advanced on the throw into second, but another great piece of hitting by Cedia, who is having a perfect day at the plate, three for three. I would have given her a double, Tom. You're being a little stingy today. And <laughs> yeah, maybe we should give her the double. She deserves it. off the it. wall. That pitch just outside to Caitlin Destacio. Destacio's one for two at the plate. She had an RBI single last inning. That pitch down low, and it gets away from the catcher, and advancing to third is the pinch runner, Sienna Harrigan. Third baseman's having a little trouble over there. She's blocking the base. Fortunately, the girls are wearing turf shoes. If this was on the uh, other field, they can wear metal spikes. 
And that is going to get away from the catcher. Here comes Harrigan to try to score. The throw will be off the mark, and it's a 6-1 Hillers nah, lead. Nah, nah, nah. Harrigan scores on the wild pitch, and the Hillers lead by five. Well, that clears the bases. All things going to Hiller's way as that pitch is outside and that'll draw the walk. That umpire behind home plate is very diligent. I think the score is 6-1 now. He walks down the first base line on a walk just to make sure the runner touches the base. I don't think I've ever seen that. Catherine Morse steps in and takes ball one. A six to one lead for the Hillers. Three runs in the third, three more in the fourth. And this is up the middle, and that'll get through for a base hit. Runners on first and second with two outs. I'll bring up Carly Stevens, the catcher. The second visit by Coach DeVita. And you wonder if uh, we'll see a Substitute pitcher at some point for the Scarlet Hawks. Do you have six runs or is the scoreboard? No, it's six It's six to one, the scoreboard's off. Carly Stevens so far is 0 for 2 in this game. On the season, heading into this game, she was 3 for 15. But she has provided some great stability in the catcher's position, and she'll rip this one oh. right to the third baseman. So they call it the hot corner. And that is going to be the third out of the inning, but the Hillers plate three more runs, and it's a 6-1 lead as we head to the top of the fifth on HKM. Top half of the fifth inning, a 6-1 lead for the Hillers. HKM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. I think they had an open mic there on Friday night. I was going to go down there and sing a song, but the, they had a bowl of tomatoes ready for me. Lee's Farbach takes strike one. <laughs> Good story, Larry. Well, <laughs> CD of deals. There's strike two. Wheeling and dealing. Someday I'll show you my singing talent. Eight strikeouts so far for Cedia, and that one's fouled away. Quickly down 0-2. Well, we are live on YouTube right now. You could show the world. <laughs> <laughs> I got a frog in my throat. If it jumps out, I'll entertain you. The 0-2 pitch from Cedia, just low. Lee's Feuerbach. Their only plate appearance walked back in the second inning. Wind up in a pitch, and this is up the middle, past the reach of a diving Emily Whalen, and it is going to be a single for Fauerbach. Emily Whalen laid out on that one, but she didn't have a chance. It'll bring up Natalie Casilli, the left fielder. I don't think she would have laid out on that on the dirt infield. There's strike one. Runner on for the Scarlet Hawks. No outs here in the top of the fifth. CD deals. Fouled away. 0 oh and 2. Lefty awaits the pitch. Just inside, one and two. Hiller's infield not playing particularly deep. Double play depth. Swing and a miss. Out number one. She got about 10 Ks today so far. That is K number nine. It was off one. That 
Brings up Taylor Wardrop, the right fielder. And this is up the middle to the shortstop. Throw to second for one. And they will get the lead runner for out number two. So Wardrop reaches on the six to four force out. And that'll bring up Olivia Morelli, the second baseman. Just high, one and oh. Well, Carly Stevens has done a nice job behind the plate in place of Jillian Cedia while she's using some chopsticks overseas. Maybe tuning in right now. Upstairs, picked up by Stevens as it got away a little bit. Runner on first, two outs for the Scarlet Hawks. 6 1 Hiller's lead here in the top of the fifth. That pitch a little bit low. 3 and 0. Oh. There's a strike. Throw to first, runner back. That back pick rarely works in softball because the ball is very big. There's another strike to fill up the count. Bigger ball, smaller hands. And this is hit in the air to right field and caught. And that is out number three. A little confusion out there as to the number of outs. Right. Had me confused for a minute. That is out number three to wrap up the top of the fifth to the bottom of the inning we go. The Hillers leading Milford 6-1 to one on HCAM. Bottom of the fifth inning, all kinds of defensive changes for the Milford Scarlet Hawks. We have a new pitcher out there. It is Olivia Moretti who moved over from second base to take over in the pitcher's circle as Emily Whalen steps into the batter's box. Lucy Creedon is the new first baseman. Carly Ferrer, the new third baseman. And the new second baseman is Megan Hart. It's official now. We do have somebody over the pond watching the game. From Paris. Paris, China, they're all over the place. Hello. Hey, Brett, how you doing? <laughs> A big hello to all of our viewers taking this game in live on our YouTube stream. And this is a fair ball throw to first. Whalen reaches. What speed up the line. And Feuerbach just could not get it there in time. And I think a little hesitation getting to that ball. And it is a leadoff single for Whalen. Mia Morningstar will step in. A bunt here, picked up by the pitcher, Nobody and no one's at first, everybody's safe. The right fielder's got her arms outstretched like who's covering the bag. Should have been the second baseman. They're all out of position now. A miscommunication there, and Katie Holly's going to step in. Killer is already leading six to one, and they are threatening here in this bottom of the fifth with two on and no outs, that pitch down low. Pitch inside, two and oh. I don't know why she's not hitting away with her power. She's got a gap in right center field that's really, really wide open. This time doesn't get the running start. We'll rip it into right field. And it is handled by Wardrop. Everybody's going to be safe. Bases loaded, no outs for the Hillers. Foot or two to the right or the left. That would have been a three bagger. Jordan Chevery will step in with the bases juiced. Hillers have a chance to really break this one open. Third baseman playing in, shortstop playing in a little bit, second baseman creeping in. And Chevery will rip this one foul. Oh and one. Third base coach didn't even move. 
Oh, Coach Allberry's a pro. Yeah. I probably would have dove out of the way if it was oh, me. Oh, yeah. Or I would have pushed you in front of me. Right, him. right. <laughs> one and one. No luncheon special for you. I was going to take you out to lunch. <laughs> Watch you choke on a spare rib. The one, one. And this is up the left side. That'll get past the reach of the shortstop. One run is in to score. And that's all that'll score, but the bases remain loaded for the Hillers. An RBI single for Jordan Chevery. Station to station they're playing. Morning Morningstar up to third. Katie Holly up to second. Alyssa McIntyre to the plate. A 7-1 Hillers lead. You got Grandma Ruthie watching. Uncle Jimmy. That one just upstairs, 1-0. and oh. Mal McIntyre. Down low. Alyssa McIntyre looking down at third base for a signal that isn't there. Just hit away, kid. There's a called strike, two and one. Looked a little low to me. I thought so too. No outs for the Hillers, bases loaded. Another run has scored here in this bottom of the fifth. It's a 7-1 lead. And this is hit up the left side. That'll drop in. One run is in. And the bases remain loaded for the Hillers. An RBI single for Alyssa McIntyre. The Morningstar comes around to score. Katie Holly pushes up to third. Jordan Chevery up to second. Here comes damage. An 8-1 lead for the Hillers. The second baseman now moving back a little bit. And the way she hits, she should. A pitch upstairs, one and oh. Oh, she's got a mask, never mind. CDO waits the pitch. And she'll get a piece of this one past the reach of the shortstop. Katie Holly around a score, and Chevery will be held up at third. An RBI single for Juliana Cedia. And her day at the plate remains perfect. She is four for four. I'll bring up Caitlin Destacio, the designated player. And she gets a piece of this one over to left center, and that'll drop just in front of the wall. One run is in, a second run being waved around. Cedia will be held up at third, and the Hillers pouring it on the Scarlet Hawks as they have plated five runs in this inning, and they lead it 11 to one. A two RBI hit for Caitlin DeSasio. I thought that had a chance to get out of here right off the bat. Over the yellow monster out there. Catherine Moore steps in, and this is a slow roller up the middle, picked up by the shortstop, throw to first in time. And that is actually the first out of the inning. We'll bring up Carly Stevens. Runners on second and third for the Hillers. One out. And Stevens stepping in. Hillers leading by 10. And this is hit in the air over to left field. It is caught. And the runner from third, CD, is going to tag and try to score. She slides in and she's called out. So that'll be the third out of the inning. And we will head to the top of the sixth. The Hillers add five more runs, and they lead Milford 11 to one on H cam. Top of the sixth inning, an 11 to one lead for the Hillers as they added five more runs in the bottom of the fifth. Cedia delivers, and there's a strike. This game only an hour and 14 minutes old. Lucy Creed in the hitter at the plate for the Scarlet Hawks. Cedia delivers. This is hit in the air to the right side. Whalen trying to make the catch, and she was just a little bit off there. Covered a lot of ground on that one. Certainly did. That would have been a great play if she was able to pull that one in. Oh, and two. I almost forgot my press credentials coming in today. 
unfortunately, they let me through the gate. Swing and strike. There's out number one. She's we'll bring in the double figures now. Yep, that's the tenth strikeout for Juliana Cedia today. As Megan Hart steps in. Up high. CD is set to deliver. There's a strike. One and one. Charlotte Kahn is getting a well-deserved day off after she went seven innings yesterday. There was seven solid innings as well. Yesterday's game, for whatever reason, seemed like it was going as slow as molasses. Today's game is going right along. 2-1. Up high. Three and one. CD is set to deliver. Swing and a miss. Full count. One out in the inning for the Scarlet Hawks. Juliana CD, a 10 strikeouts today. Looking for a number 11 right here. There it is, out number two, strikeout number two of the inning. Carly Ferreira, the first baseman, will step in. Well, actually, she started the game at first base, moved over to third. The Hillers graduated only one senior last year, Emma Murphy, who's a, up at Endicott College. She's an owl. Fouled away. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah. Ooh. Great little factoid there, Larry. Yeah. Nice campus up there overlooking the water up in Beverly. But only losing one senior. And that's fouled off the backstop 0-2. It means you have a lot of talent left over from last year. And they certainly do, and they have a lot of up-and-coming talent as well, especially in the pitcher's circle. And this is hit in the air to the right side and caught by Mia Morningstar. She had to battle the sun but was able to pull it down for the third and final out of the inning. To the bottom of the six we go. The Hillers leading Milford 11 to 1 on each cam. We are set for the bottom of the six. The Hillers leading Milford 11 to 1. Two up for the Hopkinton Hillers is the top of the order as Emily Whalen set to step in. Olivia Moretti remains in the game as the pitcher for Milford. We have a new third baseman for Milford. Aaron McAvoy is in the game over at third base. The pitch is low, one and oh. McAvoy charging in from third base. Knows what Emily Whalen can do. No secret here. Ready deals, and this is ripped up the right side, and that'll be a base hit for Emily Whalen. She is now three for five on the day. Second baseman might have had a chance at that if she was playing in a regular spot. That went whistling by her ear. The morning star steps in. And she's going to bunt. Up the middle, and no play will be made. No one was covering first base, and everybody's safe. That's twice that's happened already on bunts. And I gotta say, the first baseman may not be familiar with that territory. Two on, no outs for Katie Holly. It's gotta be a deflating feeling for a pitcher feeling a bunt and not having anybody to throw to. The pitch is low. Runners will stay put. Ready deals. Up high. Do we have a new right fielder out there, Tom? Perhaps.
Down low and nicely fielded by the catcher, Feuerbach. Hopkin and coach are showing some sportsmanship being up 11 to one. Not gonna run on anything questionable. 3-0 count and this is up the middle. Emily Whalen going to be waved around and she will score easily. 12-1 Hillers, an RBI single for Katie Holly. One more run here, Tom, and that could be it. The mercy rule might come into effect. It certainly could, as Jordan Chevery will step in. Who will do the deed? Chevery or McIntyre? Hit in the air to the right side, and that's going to drop in fair territory, and everybody will be safe. Lead runner held up at third, and the bases are loaded for the Hillers, still with no outs in the inning. I'll bring up Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop. She's got three RBIs on the day. This is hit in the air to the shortstop and caught. In one away. fly, yep. she's automatically out. Now Juliana Cedia will step in. She is four for four at the plate today. Only she has scored three base. runs and driven in two. Second baseman doesn't want to be playing there. And, and this is ripped game. past the reach of the shortstop. One run is in, and that'll put the Hillers up by 12. An RBI single for Cedia, and the mercy rules will go into effect. The Hopkinton Hillers defeat the Milford Scarlet Hawks 13 to one by way of the mercy here in the bottom of the sixth. The Hillers now four and one on the season. Milford falls to one and three. A great offensive performance by the Hillers today and a terrific pitching performance today by Juliana Cedia who struck out 11 hitters. The Hopkinton Hillers take down the Milford Scarlet Hawks 13 to one on this Wednesday afternoon. For John Ritz on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Hopkinton Hillers softball on HCAM. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.